Welcome everybody to my next Sprout Edit tutorial. In this particular tutorial I'll be talking about GAT editing. Now I didn't stress this particular topic as much in the previous uh, uh, tutorials. However, for this one I will be and we'll be covering a whole broad section of it. So here's a little breakdown of it, of GAT ed editing. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what are GATs, you know, what are they used for, how they apply to maps, and uh, pretty much what are the common types of GATs we're going to be using in-game and uh, from that we can decide how they're going to be used in our mapping. Next thing is to look at how to navigate to GAT editing uh, mode, a uh, little bit of hotkey work and just the keys involved when using it. Next thing we're look at, the next thing we're, we're going to look at is uh, how to apply your GATs to the ground you know, and actually you know, produce it on a map and then how to actually raise and lower GATs and then uh, slope them and then finally some built-in GAT functions in Brow Edit and a, a couple of my own tips that I personally use when actually applying GATs. So let's get started. So for this particular one, I'm gonna open up Prontera for our base of learning. All right, so click O to render my models, L for my lighting, and two to get rid of my grid lines. All right, sweet. So how do we uh, actually use GATs and what are GATs exactly? Well, GATs are the walkable and non-walkable areas in your map. Pretty much, it pretty much decides where a player is gonna go and how they actually interact with the world around them. You can create all kinds of GATs, non-walkable GATs, walkable GATs. You can create non-walkable GATs, but you can snipe over it, so you can shoot players across it. You can do the same thing, but without the shooting across it, so it's just, you know, not walkable and that sort of thing. And there's a couple of others, but those are the main focuses, uh, focus of GATs we're going to look at. So how do we actually get to GAT editing, editing mode? There's two methods that you can do it. The long way is to go to edit mode, GAT edit and you're inside or just click F2 there just click F6 and then we're in it. So let's see how our window and our GAT edits all come together. So to the right you can see we have our GATs. Those are two of a whole set of them. To navigate through the list just click your open and close bracket, close bracket to go to the right and open bracket to go to the left. So if you scroll to the right you can see all kinds of them and I'm just going to go just a quick review of what they are. So green is walkable, pretty simple. As you can see on the map, we see a whole lot of green. Uh, not walkable is your not walkable zone. So you can see that I click O. Here's, this entire fountain is not walkable aside for some specific areas. The not walkable no snipe, again, you, can, you cannot walk in it, but and you can also not snipe over it. It's a blue color. And the one we will be using, and uh, that is, yeah, yeah, that we will be uh, using is not walkable, but snipeable. So this one, and this, uh, this one we're definitely going to use. The not walkable no snipe, I find that really pointless because it's just the same thing as this red not walkable. So in reality, there's three main GAT textures we're going to use. Walkable, not walkable, and not walkable but snipeable. Okay, so how do we actually select it? Well, by default, you're already selected on the, on the walkable uh, texture. So if I just put my mouse over an area and just you know, hold left key, the left mouse button key, you'll notice that it starts to paste it, as you can see like that. Click U to undo your GATs that you did. So you can see all the all the original ones are coming back together. There's a limitation for that, and that's as far back as it goes. So keep that in mind. You know, U, your undo key for undoing your GAT edit uh, has its limitations. So if I actually click or select a piece of the walkable area, it does not matter how big it is, it'll still be walkable because I'm selecting the walkable area. But what if I select not walkable? So if I select this tiny piece here, it will not work because Browdit is just like that. A whole lot of bugs, which is fine, but it's just, uh, this is another one of its bugs. You can't actually select not walkable at this particular uh, window or this particular set of inventory lists you can see. However, if I click the close bracket once to, the, to go to the right, now if I select the not walkable area, it should appear. Alright, so how do we actually in increase and decrease our radius of this? As you can see, it's taken a lot of work just to cover a little bit of area. Keep in mind that every single cell is one, one spot a player can walk in, so there's a ton of them. Well, if you just click plus, your radius increases, and minus is for the radius decrease. So that's how you can really get around your map pretty quickly. <coughs> so the next thing we're going to talk about is raising and lowering gats. So as you can see, we have a bench here. This is a perfect application for 
raising and lowering your GATs. So how do I actually do it? Well, all I need to do is click the page up key and the page down key. Page up to increase your height, like so, or page down to decrease your height of the GAT. Keep in mind, please make sure that you have edit sloping is not checked to actually raise your GATs. All right, so make sure you, you know that and do that. But what if our bench is off its mark? What if we want the bench to move over, yet at the same time see the GATs? We'll click F5, and then go to View, GAT Tiles, select the object, move it forward like that. Let's move it a little bit more, just like this. Now that our GATs are in place, click the Page Up button. That should be fine. Um, actually, the gat's a little bit too far behind here, so I'm going to adjust my bench like this. There we go. And it should be good. I'm just going to lower this by one. And now players should be able to go on the bench. But what about these little corner pieces? Well, just make them not walkable. Select, as you can see, I did there. It's not walkable. And now players can actually walk up on top of the bench and, you know, sit down and do whatever they want. And that's really how you raise gats. It's pretty simple. You can increase the radius if you want. And click the page up key and does the same thing. Right? Make sure that you do not put gats underneath the terrain of the map. That would be a very stupid thing to do and you can cause all kinds of annoying bugs and stu stuff like that. So please make sure that your gats remain on top or above the terrain level. Okay? Um, this does have exceptions when it comes to walls if you want. But I mean like the terrain level where at, at its lowest point you, you should not put gats below that. Um, so yeah, that's just an idea. So we we discussed about applying gats, what the kind of gat, the kind of gats there are, the common types of gats we use, and how to raise and lower them. But what about sloping? Sloping is another story. So let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna make a little small margin here. Let's see how big. Okay. How about that? That's a good size. So I'm just gonna raise this all. Nine, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just gonna lower a couple of pieces down here. Now raising and lowering gats will, I mean sorry, sloping gats will pretty much be used for uh, trying to conjoin your, your uh, gats with objects that have slopes to themselves, such as a staircase or uh, something that has some sort of, uh, of uh, angle going up somewhere that you want a player to move upwards towards. So I'm just doing this. I'm just putting a couple of gats down here, just raising and lowering them, trying to create a sort of stair-like fashion. I'm going to stop the video, but I will resume it after I finish it to save you guys some time. Alright, so there it is. Very simple stair-like gats, right? If you want to compare this to a player's height, just go to, you know, edit mode, sprite edit, control left click, spawn to sprite, and there's a basic idea for how big your, you know, your sprite is to the gats. But let's get to the sloping. So all I have to do to slope it is just, you know, increase the radius, and then once you cover part of the gats from the ground up, click F. And you'll notice the gats will connect and collide, and they will form a sort of slope. And that's how you slope gats. Now unfortunately, you cannot click the S key to smooth it out, but there is another way around that after I finish up the slopes here. So I'm just going to finish up all the sloping here, whatever. Alright, gats are all connected. But what if I want to adjust the slope height? Well, if you go to edit mode, sloping, this will actually slope the gats as you raise them and lower them. So if I go down here and just, uh, it's a little too high, too low, sorry. Go here, you can notice that I'm actually sloping the gats right here on the on the uh, bottom piece of the staircase. So try to get the, the corners here. I'm just going to try to get this as much like as straight as possible. Try to smooth it out a bit. But that's really how you, you do it. That's how you smooth them out. Try to match their height. Like that. There we go. Notice how much how how nicer it is. Uh, how much nicer it is when I sloped it like that. So, what you would generally want to do is when you have the you know you have an object in the middle somewhere here, right? So, I don't know what I could use for a slope, but okay, whatever. I'm gonna use this guy. So I'm just gonna turn this around like this. Uh, you cannot see the object once you raise the gats, which is a disadvantage, but you have to get an idea where it is, right? So if I just click view again, 
GAT tiles. You know, clicking F5 and X6 should help you out to get an idea where your GATs are being placed on this object, but that's what you would want to do. You would, you know, place your object somewhere around the GAT slope, so you try to coordinate it that way. All right. So what if I wanted to put this slope back to the ground? There's a built-in function for that called edit set GAT height, and everything just snaps back to normal. Pretty simple. So we discussed sloping, raising, lowering GATs, the type of GATs, whatnot, and again, let's look at some tips and things that I do when it comes to actually applying your GATs and when to do it. Well, I generally apply my GATs after I finish the entire map. So you finish your lighting, you finish your object, you finish your terrain, you know your map's set, it's just a matter of applying your walkable areas. So whenever I do that, I always start off with making everything not walkable. So I just increase my radius to be something ridiculously high, left click the placed, and everything's not walkable. And now it's just a matter of filling in the, the walkable zone. So I increase my radius and then start fresh from that. You will have to be patient when it comes to applying your, your walkable and not walkable GATs because it is very tedious work. So keep that in mind. If you are making a map and if the map is big, you're just going to have to accept the fact that it will take some time to apply your GATs. There are a couple things around that, but hey, that's just that's what you have to do. But uh, another tip when it comes to applying GATs is what if I wanted to, you know, make non-walkable GATs around this particular object? Well, uh, actually, wait, let me, this is, this will only work if I did it the inverse. So if I did that, okay, so let's just say that you didn't want to do the non-walkable areas, right, first. You want to do the walkable, the non-walkable, the non-walkable areas around your objects independently, and then leave the rest walkable, as you can see over here. Well, what I usually do is I always draw a perim perimeter around the object first. Try your best to do this. I'm not doing it too well here, but I'm just making a very quick sketch of this. As you can see, I'm just applying a very simple non-walkable area around it. Uh, always get, always catch the corners here because players can actually go through non-walkable gats if it's on if it's not cornered properly, like this. So block it all up, and then after you have your you know your general perimeter complete, and this done here. There we go. So after you have it done, click the O button to not to unrender your uh, your object, and then just fill in the inside. Pretty simple. Just do that, and your your object should be good. Click O to re-render it, and you're good. And then just do that for every single object on your map that requires GATs. <coughs> Another uh, GAT function that is useful is the collision, particularly the GAT collision two. One I don't really touch. GAT collision two can be very useful. What it does is it creates your walkable areas and non-walkable areas, but it does some sort of thinking process to see what areas should not be walkable based on the object and what it's t what area it's taken up. It does take a little bit of time. You, you have to leave, the, uh, leave the, this little function to do its little work. It'll come back in a couple minutes and it should be done. As you can see, it actually generated a bunch of non-walkable areas around uh, models you would not put walkable areas in. It is a little slow because there's a lot of stuff going on here, but you can definitely see the non-walkable areas there. So it is very useful because it catches all the objects for you, or most of them, and you could just work around that, and uh, from that itself you can decide, okay, what, what, I, what, I, what do I need to finish off to make something not walkable or walkable? And let me just shut this thing off because it is, uh, you can't actually stop it, you have to wait. It's just like, um, yeah, actually I just can't stop it. So let me just restart Brout it. All right, so I just restarted Brout it, but I want to show you where the snipeable zones can be applied to. So let's go to like a uh, Komodo Field 2. It's a perfect example. So F6, and you can see that we have some hilltops here, right? Well, these are pretty big hilltops, so you generally wouldn't want to put no, uh, you know, snipeable zones here because really the player won't be able to see a thing. It won't really help at all. But for smaller hills like this, you can certainly do that. So all that was done was that you just scroll to not walkable but snipeable, select a piece, and then just cover it. So if I wanted to give you like an idea how that was done here, just go back and then color it up. Whoops, wrong one. Color it up, and you're done. So now you know people can snipe from down, from up here to down here, or vice versa. You know, it, it's useful for for your dungeon creating, whoa, castles, whatever you want to make. So that was the last thing I wanted to cover with you guys. And that's it. That's get editing. Pretty simple. It's just tedious work, but other than that, it's a necessity, of course, to creating maps. And generally, it's the last thing you'd want to do when creating a map. All right. So have fun, guys. And if you have any questions or concerns or just uh, 
any general help or whatnot, you can reach me at arathena.org under my name, Suji, S-Y-O-U-J-I. You, you can hit me up with a private message there, or just create a thread in the graphic support section, and I'll get to you as soon as possible answering your, uh, your questions. All right, take care, and have a great day.